The competition is mounting here by the day. Yes. Interesting announcement that you're putting Seattle's best, another brand of yours, in Burger Kings across the yes. country, yeah. hitting, I would assume, very different customers than come into this store? Yes. Well, um, here's a statistic that people are surprised by. Uh, despite the long-term success that we've enjoyed, we have less than 10% share of coffee consumption in North America and less than 1% share internationally. Now, having said that, there's a lot of places that people are drinking lots of coffee that are not compatible with the brand equity of Starbucks. Uh, fast food environments are, are, are part of that. But we have this wonderful brand that has been under the shadow of Starbucks for 20 years called Seattle's Best Coffee. It's more approachable, it's more accessible, it's a lighter roast, and we're now going to unleash Seattle's Best Coffee to have ubiquitous distribution. Uh, throughout the country, and QSR is one of those places. Burger King, I think, is a fantastic place for Seattle's best coffee to live, and it also gives Burger King an opportunity to compete with their competitors by offering great coffee. Well, and and, and we, we like let, that. Let's just say the name, McDonald's. Yeah. Well, McDonald's Premium Coffee, yeah. they have been a, a formidable challenger, haven't they? Well, you know, the interesting thing about McDonald's, you know, who is a great company and have done extraordinary things, is that when they got behind coffee, our business started to grow again. So they raised awareness. They spent a lot of money on advertising. You're saying the, they helped you? They did help us, yes. Really? Yeah. In a perverse way, they did. And, and so what I'm saying is that the level of awareness that was created by McDonald's tens of millions of dollars of advertising created more trial in the marketplace and differentiation. Well, and doesn't it help that you have legislation pushing for people to move away from soda? So well, you, you have that as well. Yeah, I haven't thought about that, but thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, but the point is, <laughs> if you look around this store and the environments that we create, is it's not only the quality of the coffee, which we believe is has no peer. It's the experience, it's the relationship our people have with the customer. And, and I think we've created an environment that is so significantly different than anyone who is in the fast food business who's trying to sell great coffee. But I, I want to push you on McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts okay. because they're all push in me. a two-block radius of yeah. my office and yeah. people I work with go to all of them. Yeah. Uh, what do you look at at Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's and admire and say yeah. we need to bring that here? And well, what do you look at and say, yeah. not for yeah. us? Well, let's go back to what we said before. There's no finish line here. So no one at Starbucks, despite the fact that we had record earnings last quarter, is celebrating. There's no victory lap. We have a lot of work to do. And we've got competitors all over the world who want to take the food off Starbucks' table. We get that. Now, the consumer has lots of choices. We believe very strongly the quality of our coffee, the value proposition, the environment, the trust and reputation of the company, almost in every scenario, will convince our customers that Starbucks is the place to continue to, to go. Now, our competitors are aggressive, they're using price and promotion, but they are not a coffee company. McDonald's is a, is a company that sells fast food and hamburgers. But you're, you're selling more food now, and, yeah, and but I, we, I hear we're yeah. going to see more. Yeah, but food is complementary and an adjacent, adjacency to Starbucks. So it's always going to be about the coffee. Yeah. And let's, just, let's define that. Starbucks is sourcing only th 3% of the finest coffee in the world. The, the other 97% is not good enough for us. The irony of, of the fact that we've grown all these years is the quality of, the, of access, the quality of coffee blending, and everything we do around coffee has gotten significantly better. And so we're, we're going to be bringing coffees to the marketplace that we've, we haven't had before and continue to reaffirm and invest in the authority that we have around coffee and the coffee experience. And, and I think what's happened over the last two years is that not only have we taken over $500 million of cost out of the business, but there's a new muscle, a new discipline, and most of that savings is permanent, and we'll have much more leeway in the middle of our P&L to invest in our people, our coffee, the customer experience on a go-forward basis.